Yo, Crane Durham's nothing but truth. Great to be with you. Did it put a smile on your face? I hope it did. Now, it's icy, so be careful. Four wheels on ice. Even with four-wheel drive, it's still spinning. Take it easy. Hope you're looking forward to tonight's show. I am, and I want to jump right to it. Let's go to our good friend, U.S. Bureau Chief, LifeSite News, the guest host of Nothing But Truth, Ben Johnson. Welcome, Ben. So good to be with you. Thanks, Craig. Always good to be with you. I, I thought I'd play a couple clips for you because I would love to get your response to Charlie Crist. Now, as we know, the Florida politician and, and former governor of Florida was – almost a shoe-in, it seemed, for the Senate as a Republican until he met a real conservative named Marco Rubio. That said, he was asked about, well, what he feels our rights are, and it was interesting. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, or life, liberty, property. What, what, what do you think? Well, let's ask. Roll it. Said It is constitutional. It is time to get beyond this and have Republicans stop bemoaning the fact that we finally have a president who actually was able to accomplish something that really is, is an incredible civil right. I mean, you know, we have a right to food, we have a right to water, we have a right to shelter, and we have a right to affordable health care in this country. Okay, now, what, what about the right to life, Ben? Well, yeah, you know, I, I'm sure when George Washington was, you know, starving in Valley Forge, he was thinking affordable health care, affordable health care. <laughs> Obamacare is why I'm here. If you put things in that perspective, it, it, it kind of uh, gives you a better idea of whether something is really a right or not. That's what I always think when people say gay marriage is a right. I think George Washington would not have taken a bullet for that. Same thing with, <laughs> with Obamacare. You know, uh, the, the fact of the matter is uh, Charlie Crist is pro, uh, pro-abortion, although... To be fair, he's kind of been everywhere on the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, PolitiFact even kind of looked at his record. Uh, he, he has been you know, almost everywhere because he's been everywhere, politically speaking. He's been a Republican, he's been an Independent, he's been a Democrat. And as his views evolve or uh, blow in the wind, his position seems to correct itself uh, in, in order to get the largest number of people in whatever party or non-party he happens to be in at that particular moment, which is exactly why he lost to Marco Rubio. He was not someone who was known as having a particularly strong spine. Uh, he, he embraced Obama very early on, and you know, he embraced Obamacare. And, uh, of course, the fact of the matter is Obamacare itself is one of the greatest violations of our most sacred right, the First Amendment right, the right to exercise our religion, which means we shouldn't have to pay for services that take the life of an unborn child. They're free, Ben. That, Come on, hold on, churches. hold on. i got to hold you to <laughs> this. Don't you understand what free means? Do, uh, hey. Look outside. You see unicorns. You see fairy dust. You see magic wands and, and wizards walking around and creating things out of nothing. It's free. Don't you get it? Free birth control, falling down from the sky <laughs> like manna. Uh, yes, uh, that's, that's, uh, that was his proposal. The Obama administration's proposal was that uh, if you don't want to pay for it, if, if your in particular business has a problem uh, with contraception or uh, abortifacient contraception, quote unquote. I, I don't think you can call it contraception if it mm -hmm. if it acts after um, a, a child has been conceived. Uh, that's not contraception. That's that's abortion. Mm -hmm. Very early term, but very it's still abortion. Nonetheless, uh, you know, they said that it would be offered for free. Now, I I don't think that anyone is manufacturing contraceptives and abortifacients out of the goodness of their heart. I know Pfizer and other companies have a tendency to want to make a profit. Uh, and that's getting harder and harder to do in this economy. But nonetheless, that's their goal. That's their intention. And thanks to Obamacare, they're going to be able to do so with your insurance dollars, whether you want them to or not. Wow. Well, just l letting people realize what the real issue is. And once again, that's what we do here. Nothing but truth. Absolutely pro-life. But explaining how they massage the language or outright distort and lie to get their position known. Now, Charlie Chris do this has done something it's much more pronounced than other politicians but a lot of politicians do it including wendy davis and her change when it came to the 20 week ban after 20 weeks of for abortions and she from what i gather in your reporting ben this is the thing that made her famous this put her on the map made her a hero for the pro-abortion movement and she seemed did she flip-flop on this? Uh, well, she, she did and she didn't. I, what, what she did was sort of render language useless. Uh, it, it makes you wonder if, if 
some of these politicians own a dictionary and a thesaurus, or they just make things up out of thin air. Uh, Wendy Davis had, of course, filibustered against what eventually became House Bill 2, the uh, ban on abortion at 20 weeks, as well as certain health restrictions for abortion, saying that uh, if you have an abortion facility, you have to meet certain health codes and you have to have admitting privileges uh, at a local hospital within 30 miles if you practice in case you botch an abortion. She stood up in pink sneakers, we were, we were told, over and over again for 11 hours and filibustered against this bill, went to New York City at a fundraiser and said that it was sacred ground that forced her to take a stand in her pink sneakers in favor of abortion, and then uh, came back to Texas and said she's pro-life. She said, I am pro-life uh, in, in front of a crowd down uh, in southern Texas. And then the next day, her, her people went out to the meeting and said she didn't mean she was pro-life in that sense, not when it comes to abortion. So when it comes to this particular story, she said now that she would favor a ban, but only a ban that, quote, defers to women and their doctors so that the women and the doctors make the, those decisions. The kind of ban that isn't really a ban, the kind of ban that actually is completely, completely worthless and useless and meaningless, and that maintains the current status quo, where uh, basically it's exactly what you always said the whole time around. It, up is down, left is right, a ban is a non-ban. Uh, what, what Wendy Davis has realized, of course, in saying this, this, this sort of word salad of nonsense is that uh, people in Texas don't really think that abortion after 20 weeks is sacred ground. The people of Texas overwhelmingly support this bill. They support uh, Governor Rick Perry for signing it. They support the legislators who overcame her filibuster uh, for doing so. And uh, she realizes that this is going to be a hard thing to ride into a governorship, which she hopes to do. Well, the, the fact that they want to be judged on their ideas and, and to really stand up for what they believe in and be clear about it, that's what we would all appreciate, even if we disagree with them and... That's what I don't think the left really wants, and that's why they're afraid of what we see as federalism, because that's what our design is for the states to make those decisions. As much, I, I want a, I want a marriage amendment, I want a life amendment, the concept, both. I absolutely do, but I realize the process is winning the hearts and minds, be, being salt and light, and speaking truth and love, and getting that point across, and making the case, and people learning more about what abortion is. Now you have two stories. One, North Dakota, last abortion facility gets admitting privileges, will stay open, and abortionist temporarily loses license for performing 268 abortions without admitting privileges. North Dakota, Texas, respectively. What's going on here, Ben? Well, North Dakota only has one abortion facility in Fargo, the uh, Red River Women's Clinic, which is owned by Tammy Krolmanager. Uh, Cromanacre uh, has not, no abortions, abortionists locally. Everyone comes in from out of state. Uh, the governor, Jack Dalrymple, signed a, a slew of pro-life bills, actually several pro-life bills, uh, all in a row. One of them required admitting privileges, as seven other states around the country had done, including Texas, as we just mentioned, saying that if you botch an abortion, you have to be able to admit uh, that woman to a local hospital. None of the abortionists there had one. There were only three hospitals in town. One of them is Catholic and said it would not grant it. One of them was a Veterans Administration hospital and would not grant them. That left one hospital, and uh, that hospital granted the privileges. So uh, this uh, it looked as though uh, the Red River uh, Women's Clinic was about to go out, and they saved it uh, by extending this. Of course, the hospital says that its mission is about healing, and it just helped uh, a facility that kills 1,200 young uh, unborn children every single year stay in business. That's the bad news. Now, the good news, and there is good news, uh, is that uh, in Texas, where this law has gone all the way up to the uh, Supreme Court, uh, it hasn't been fully adjudicated there, but it's in effect right now until it's fully adjudicated, meaning that if you were an abortionist in Texas, you have to obey this law and have admitting privileges within 30 miles. The law is in effect, and uh, a man by the name of uh, Theodore Herring, who is in Houston, did not do so. Uh, the uh, State Board of Health found him in December. They had uh, sort of an unexpected unannounced undercover investigation, found out that he was performing abortions without having these hospital admitting privileges, and so they yanked his license, at least temporarily. Uh, and uh, we don't know exactly how long that will be. They meet again in May, but they could restore it before then. But uh, the good news is that uh, at least one state in the Union is following its own law. Well, that's, that's, that's good to know, I mean, because our federal government doesn't seem to be doing that. Let me ask you, Ben, you obviously saw the Planned Parenthood 
Valentine's Day message, which is, hey, uh, women, w for Valentine's Day, they want and need abortions. Now, I, I got, uh, we have about a minute and a half remaining. You know, you know the show's clock. Let me ask you this. How do these people make these types of statements and celebrate abortion? Is, is there a blind spot? Is there a, are, are they deluded? Are, have they been deceived, self-deceived? What is it? Because they are so enthusiastic about it. Ben? It's an all-encompassing worldview. Uh, their, their view is that uh, abortion helps women because it helps liberate them from men. They believe that men oppress them, men hold them down, uh, they get barefoot and pregnant, and uh, they believe, as Hillary Clinton did, that the family is an inherently uh, unequal institution, almost bordering on slavery, she wrote many years ago. And so abortion liberates them, allows them to cut ties with men and go out into the career world uh, all on their own. And, of course, women who have been through abortion know it is the worst thing in the world. What women need is love and help and support and forgiveness, and it's available through Jesus Christ. And what else is available, what also is available, is Ben's latest article on Hillary Clinton. I find this interesting because we are starting to examine, and, and especially with the big media push already for 2016, but just to people to learn about, hey, they're going to they're gonna package Hillary in a certain way, Let's just find out what the truth is, and then people can make their own judgments. Ben, outstanding journalistic work as always. Always good to be with you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, brother. And we have a lot of mo, a friend of Ben's, a man who co-authored an article with Ben, uh, Colonel Kakulu, at the bottom of the hour, and then Seton Motley back in the house. All ahead. AFR Talk, Green Durham's Nothing But Truth. AFR Talk.